Um, I will say this much. Fuck 2015 in terms of music deaths. I agree. Oregon should not have died that young. <laughs> well, it's like Lemmy, BB King, Benny King, John Bradbury of the Specials. Yeah. Um, and two of those in the last couple of days. Yeah. Phil Taylor. And that's the cold, like the first day of this year. It's like, yeah. no, At least Lemmy we can see coming, kind of. You know? <laughs> Well, but, the, to be there's, fair, there's he different d- reasons than what you might expect. It was, it was long and suddenly, oh, whoops, cancer, oh, whoops, dead a couple of days later. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, yeah. It wasn't it was because of treating his body terribly. It was just a, oh, you've got cancer. Oh, shit, you're already dead. Pretty much. Well. But there's no cancer. <laughs> Alas, sweet Kenshiro. <laughs> I didn't intentionally do it as... <laughs> <laughs> you are already dead. Also, Christopher Lee was last year, wasn't he? Yeah. Actually, yeah, we can him. count him he's, as music. Well. But, like, he is a great musician. Everyone loves him. I mean... I'm just really upset about Oregon. Because he was so young. That's such a good point. Yeah, it was... I mean, it's been a combination of their people who are either really fucking old or treated their body terribly, so it was expected, like Lemmy. Yeah, well, I feel Oregon's also Russian and spoke, which is kind of a bad combination of us, was. Hmm. Being Russian as a, as a contributing factor. <laughs> well, you know, the pollution's like, yeah, well, that's ridiculous. It's not about this China, well, maybe, but... All that squatting just destroyed the muscles in her legs. <laughs> It didn't it get to a point earlier this year where um, right after it had been declared safe they had a day where they had to evacuate. Yes. Pretty much. Well there was a red alert it was the first time they had a red alert in Beijing just like a month ago, wasn't it? And mm. um, like red alert has not happened before. And so you know, you can see loads of pictures of people with selfie sticks and like face masks. Forget uh, red uh, alert, change it to brown! <laughs> Being a selfie stick, wasn't 2015 pretty much the year of the selfie stick? Much to watch another way to another way to fuck over concerts. Oh fucking! Oh, the, literally, yeah, the, way. Way. the sheer oh, embodiment of narcissism. Yeah, rant number two. Fuck off with the fucking cameras at concerts. I want to. I agree. I want but to watch the fucking concert. I don't want to watch your fucking camera taking a picture or a video of the fucking concert. It's not going to be anywhere near as good quality as the concert itself or officially released videos for it. Fuck off with them already! Please, then, for the love of God, fuck off with the cameras during concerts! Too bad it's all over now. It's all over now. In fact, Christopher Lee was killed by a selfie stick. He just looked at it and got so pissed off he died. <laughs> what he spontaneously <laughs> combined. Yeah, is how will these people possibly remember anything if they don't take pictures of everything? And that's why people who take pictures of food to remember what they ate. Well, that they ate in the first place, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't have our eating today. Gotta check Facebook. <laughs> it's yeah, along those crap. same lines. And always, this kind of thing has been going on for years. Yeah. It's always just, I'm not, I mean, you do like photos, just do like one or two, or maybe just don't take, record half the fucking concert. Jesus yeah. Christ. I mean, I have taken a photo or two during a gig, but that's because it's just a sort of when it looks like a really good shot to take. I don't know, the only time I've ever taken any you know, considerable amount of video was at a seated gig where I wouldn't get in the way of people. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, that reminds, that reminds me of uh, a gig I went to this year. There were so many ushers running around slapping down people with cameras. And it worked. It worked. I don't think I saw anyone really with a camera for the entire thing. Good! The seated thing, which must have made it easier. But, um, yeah, everyone got stopped. I mean, that's the thing, because I'm only five foot nine, so I kind of sink into the crowd a bit. So we when you Marvin last year and Lauren was just being blocked by everybody. Yeah. So when you've got greasy metal heads stretching up their arms, <laughs> videoing half the concert, you're sort of like, get the fuck out of my fucking way! I can't see all that well as it is. It's just obnoxious. People just don't think about, or well, don't give a shit about people behind them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Small people have got to get that first. Obviously, it's their fault otherwise. <laughs> well, this is the thing. This is why I sort of, whenever I go to a gig, I'm sort of like, right, front row now! I yeah, don't care if I'm going to get squished against the rails. I'm going to the front fucking row. Well, I went to Idolove last year with Callum. We were both at the front, so... Yeah. 
because we could. Also, we were on the bus, we actually turned up like an hour early before the gig, and then we left again because there was literally nobody there. Mm. Of course, that was the frustrating thing with the um, Psycho Sticks gig because there, there was a decent turnout, but um, it was very easy to get to the front. I mean, I I only turned up like half an hour before doors opened, and I was able to get to the front. Yeah, which is unusual for a gig. Normally, you've got to be standing in line at least like an hour and a half minimum to have yeah, a chance. That's, that's what me and me, Callum, and Steve went to hour and a half that early because we were supposed to be a queue, and there just wasn't. We turned up like half an hour before in the end, and we were still only about fourth or thirteenth in the queue. Mm. It was pretty full in there eventually. It's just a case of everyone turned up late for some reason. Yeah. I mean, okay, yeah, it was a weekday in London, so people weren't working on it. Yeah. Actually, that's a good point. It was a weekday. Even so, week half an hour before the doors open, it's still a bit weird that there weren't that many people there. Yeah, uh, you can't really argue. It means you don't have to be there super early and you can still get in and get to the front. Yeah. Um, yeah. This year has just been absolutely awful for... Oh, Scott Whalen died this year. Yeah, he did. Uh, yes, okay. Big year for music death. <laughs> On the upside... What's his name? Wilco Johnson, or whatever his name is, didn't die, mm-hmm. and he's now fine. So, this is true. also um, Bruce and Iron Maiden confirmed that his cancer's pretty much, you know, over with again. Yeah, and that was so a, okay, and that was a really nasty one, considering it was throat cancer. Yeah, which is because being a musician and a singer, yeah, not, yeah. not exactly what you want. But it's... luckily, also, I found out this year actually it was a kid a couple of years ago. But apparently, Iko Shimomiya, she had throat cancer, a uh, thyroid cancer, and she's got over that apparently as well. Which is good. Yeah, it's always a worry that they're in remission though, because you're always sort of like, oh, what if they end up out of remission again? Um, it's never it's never it's never yeah, that's one with cancer. Mm. Very rarely ever actually stays gone. Mm. So, uh, but yeah, the good news is, I guess, a lot of people aren't dead. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a shame those who aren't dead. I think in some but ways, people who die still have to a lot of good music. But we'll remember them both. That's the most important thing. What I want to mm. know though is like, how much is this? Um, or 2015 is a big year for dead for dead people. Um, versus like ha- whether it's just because right now that we in particular as a group we're all in our 20s now, like mm. mid mid 20s, and it's like we're just noticing this more because we're opened up to the like we just we're just gonna see stuff more. I think it, like, uh. I think it's mainly that we're it's one of those sort of disconnects that it doesn't quite register that these people are of the sort of age where they would die if because you're... I think with, cause well, it's just because well, the, the thing is well yeah but what I mean is like um, we're at a point where like all the, all the people that we grew up watching and listening to you know it's getting to the point where they're going to start dying yeah and it's, it's, we're going to notice it more because it's the people we grew up with yeah like, it's like and imagine there probably there's going to be a similar number of people dying every year but it's just because uh, it's finally gotten to our generation's idols mm. not literal idols but <laughs> idols is in idols the question to classify that is the same thing the same more than you've had to say <laughs> Mostly because all the idols we like are younger than us, like you know. Although, in some cases, it's one of those. Oh God, why does it have to be that? Because in cases like Scott Wayland, it was a drug overdose. So Wasn't it's... last year that guy from ELO got hit by a bale of hay as well? What? Was that 2014? It was either that. It was either 2014 or 2015. Wait, wait, yeah, like, I just want to like, lose 2013 or something. Wait, nah, it wasn't 2013, I'm sure it wasn't. Wait, wait, Bale of Hay? <laughs> yeah, Bale of Hay ran by themselves. Yeah, man, yeah, the, the guy was strong. driving along the side of a hill, and the Bale of Hay crashed down from some, some like, farmer's field. Yeah, like, no, right? I just Googled this. Yeah, 2012, man. What, really? Yes. God, we're behind. I am behind. 2012, oh no, it's the biggest year for, for music deaths, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think 2015, the... some people didn't die. <laughs> well, what yeah. it, some people, yeah, the people who didn't die in 2015 died earlier. I think the problem is that the people who have died, the reason it's sort of, it's a combination of things. A, it's because we grew up with them, so it doesn't quite register that they're of the age where they would be dying. B, it's the problem of because they're such big names, you know, BB King, Benny King. Lemmy, John yeah, Bradbury, <laughs> Christopher Lee, it's sort of like these are huge names. So, yeah. yeah. So, there's, when, there's been a disproportionate swing towards well known people dying. Yeah. 
and what's really frustrating is when you're sort of like where are the tributes to these people on BBC and everything and sort of like why are we not getting sort of at least one special for these various people or something I don't think I even saw Scott Wayland or anything even mentioned on the BBC yeah no, it's they haven't mentioned Lemmy. They haven't mentioned Scott Wayland. I'm sure, I'm sure they mentioned Lemmy. No, huh? they didn't mention Lemmy. Yeah, sorry. Well, it's been a very oblique mention where it's sort of like, wait, what, did they mention it? Huh? Well, I, know I think the, it's uh, similar timing when you watch oh, it. Yeah, this guy you mentioned it quite a bit as well. Mm. So. Thing is, I think there's been a lot of stuff going on on the TV recently, so mm. like, around the world. So you know, like sometimes it's not always easy to deal with the um, obituaries and all that. When you know, like say he di- like he died right in the last few days. Meanwhile, just a couple of days before, oh my goodness, all of this water because like <laughs> where I am, we are as deep in water, or at least we were up until just a couple of days ago, because on Boxing Day it flooded. Mm. And uh, so that was naturally taking up most of the news time, at least up here. Uh, as for the national news, that it, it took over a lot of that too. So um, mainly I think because it, his death got most overshadowed by the fact that we were constantly talking about updates to the floods. Yeah, it was a flood of news. Ah, yeah. I mean, You're fired. For the North Sea is kind of a big deal. Mm. There's been a lot of major events going on. So yeah, I it kind of, it kind well, of in Dubai, they like caught fire on New Year's Eve. Yeah. The world's falling apart, man. Who would have said that to the media? I know, but... Who would have the ability to talk? <laughs> we Lang- just, just, just scratch into walls and stuff. Language was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but at the moment, it feels more like a tangible, it actually is falling apart kind of thing. What's weird has happened okay. before, just that not quite to this scale within our lifetimes. Mm. Well, also, this time, in the case of the floods, like, we've had floods all the time for the last few years. This is the first time it's actually happened to someone you really speak to a lot of the time. So, yeah. guys, well, so. the, it's more that the whole thing with the floods is a good chunk of why that's going on. It's because of political incompetency. Yeah, but it's more worth sending money to, uh, to bomb Syria than it is paying money to increase flood defences. Once again, I think it's happened last year, but welcome to follow this cast. <laughs> Pretty yeah, much. Yeah, welcome to follow this cast. Um, well, I, I, well I here's a way to, to bring it back. The pig, and the pig, pig orchestra. <laughs> I well, here's a way to bring it back to music. Let's do a Feed the World style fundraiser for York. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're already okay for the most part. Like we've had, yeah, well, if we don't do band aid style thing, then all the money we send to the incompetent York government, which will then spend it on bombing Syria. I know York. Well, no, no, no. no. York Council. Okay. No, you've got it wrong. It would get sent to some strange warlords that somehow exist in York, who were actually <laughs> the cause of the flooding somehow. I don't know how. Are they monarchs? This poor. Watered out Saudi warlord. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not even kidding. That's what happened to a, a, a good percentage of the money from Band Aid and everything. It yeah, actually, it actually ended up getting sent to the warlords who were causing the problems. How because they were in charge, pretty much. They pretty much just took it because you know they were in charge. They had the ability to. Yeah. Charge. Well, besides that, all you're gonna do is basically, if you were to get, if it were to be given to the people, you could go. We probably just go by and say, "Oh yeah, there's been a huge tax hike. What's the product tax, tax, tax hike up to now? Probably the cost of everything you got from Band Aid." Mm. <laughs> Basically, yeah, it'd be like it'd be like Zimbabwe or whatever it was that when you know, the currency became completely useless. Yeah, it's it's actually put 1920s Germany to shame in terms of how hyperinflated everything's gone. We politics <laughs> now. It was like that before. Yeah, it, even worse. it got worse. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah. Um, the hilarious thing is, you know how much Band Aid actually raised in total? Like 1.5 billion or something, wasn't it? No. Well, you are way overestimating. Now, in terms of record sales, at the time, 14 million. Okay. okay. There were. F- no. I was obviously way off. Yeah. There were 40, 40 multi millionaires. Singing on that record. Wow. Yeah. If each of them gave 
one million they would have tripled what the record actually made I mean what is that but it's about making a difference don't you understand it's like all about coming together and like making this beautiful <laughs> art Dan you were going to say please no as if that would get past X Factor anything now no it wouldn't it really wouldn't um, exactly how much is that in mailbox because I in the hell box that can translate to us I think that would equal something like uh, mailbox <laughs> with, with 13 pence <laughs> Roughly the price of five Freddos. <laughs> we're, we're looking in the region of about 70 million. Right, okay. So. I just tried to, to calculate how many Freddos that is. <laughs> 10. <laughs> <laughs> what, are we dealing with Lira now, where the currency was so weak that you'd go for a pizza and it would cost 15 billion Lira? Oh, <laughs> anyway, back to music. Before... Back to music. Well, okay, so idols, dead people, and uh, what next? Oh, what next? Um, oh, let's go for the Billboard 100. The year end Billboard 100, to be specific. Uh, fill me in. I'm not, I don't think I actually looked at it. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I'll say this much. I'm fine with what had the year-end number one slot, which also oh. had the year-end oh. 2014 slot. Oh, yeah, Uptown Funk. For two years running, it's had the year-end number one slot. I am well, fine with song. this. Well deserved. Yeah. Yeah. However, the number two slot, and here we go into rant number three. Thinking oh, no. Out Loud by Ed Sheeran. Now, first of all, Ed Sheeran, um, I'm neutral on. I uh, don't like or hate most of his stuff. But, if Ed Sheeran has to have a song that's the year-end number two slot, and I'm blaming every single motherfucking person who requested thinking out loud i'm blaming all of you not my co-hosts but every single person who thinks it's a good song if you have to have a ed sheeran song as a 2015 year end why do you not request sing a song that actually has energy good writing something that can get you enthused why do you go for the dreary, tired, uncomfortably lyriced and instrumentalized dross that is thinking out loud? The answer is people like what they already understand. But it's shite! And I don't care what anyone thinks, it is shite. You are fooling yourselves into thinking that it is in any way constructively good. Ed, you're talking about uh, you're arguing for the, the consumption of good media in an era where Gogglebox is watched. Or moreover, Gogglebox exists. We are, oh, I, I know, so. but I've got to get this off my chest because I fight for good music. I fight for the listening to good music. This, this podcast exists to introduce people to good music. That's an animal that, if I may say something that sounds a bit dubious, I say, well, I say this as a, as a, somebody who listens to Denver, I'm all in favour of shit music too. I'm, what I'm in favour of is variety. Oh. I'll gladly take shit musicians no. if it means that we actually get more flavour. Uh, okay, okay. I, 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 okay, I, I should really clarify here. It's not a matter of good music. It's a matter of music that doesn't bore me to tears. I mean, I listen to Katy Perry for fuck's sake, and that is by no means good music. That is some of the worst music that's written. Ed, but it has energy. It has enthusiasm. It actually makes me want to not kill myself. 
Ed, maybe you should release an experimental album, Ed being bored to tears, and it's just the sound of you being bored to tears, slowly, for like, the entire duration of one long track. Wait, so is it's not like one song that they're recording over like a hundred year period, just condensed into like a five minute song? <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, not gonna, well, yeah, um, Katy Perry, yeah, energy, yes, good. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing that really struck me this year is like, like, uh, wasn't it was, it, forgive me if I'm getting this wrong, I might be thinking about 2014 again, but like, this last year, wasn't it like the whole load of clarity ribbons and so on? Or was it that last, the year before? In any case, I don't know. I, I, I got really hung up on all of these clarity remixes by Zed, right? Because mm -hmm. there are loads of ones I really like, like, people I really like, like Odyssey, Hero Beat, and uh, Iosis, the, the Doja Group even did a remix, and you know, there, there, there are tons of them that I liked. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, uh, my friend Kay, he uh, got me to listen to it and said, Firework, and, so, and I said, doesn't carry so like Firework? And uh, linking to a mashup of the two of them, they sound almost exactly the same. <laughs> and I freak, and I freak the fuck out because it's like I, I was like, yeah, man, this song is so adaptable. You can do so much with it. And then, and it was like, yeah, I know, it's it, it's so adaptable. It can even be sung by a completely different person with different lyrics. It's exactly the same. <laughs> I was like, well, so much innovation. I don't really, yeah, well, I still like it, but I, I, it makes me uncomfortable, nonetheless. Yeah, well, that's because it's being produced by computers. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> To be fair, we're talking about Katy Perry. We're hardly going to get innovation from there. Well, yeah, no, I, I, I suppose it's sometimes you don't even expect innovation, but like, um, probably innovation from Katy Perry, where you can totally get it from Selena Gomez. Oh God! <laughs> Fucking Selena Gomez, who came um, out with the it was something uh, I I. Because I watch a lot of uh, year-end sort of worst songs of 2015 lists and 2004, whatever. And she came out with a line that was something like, let me syncopate my sing to the rhythm of your heart. What does that even make sense? <laughs> what? I mean, syncopate... The, I mean, <coughs> for one thing, syncopate means to have it off rhythm. Sort of, <laughs> this is syncopated rhythm yeah i think a good example of that is uh, the drumming in the man of steel trailers yeah um but it's all sort of like do you mean synchronize it still doesn't make any fucking sense because how do you synchronize skin with heart but at least it would actually I've been captain Earth. huh you've been captain <laughs> i'm just trying to think of i'm just trying to think about waking you and synchronize with heart like and all I'm getting is fart and fart, and I'm just thinking, come along, Bort. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a, you, can, you find some of these lyrics and you just go, what does that even mean? It's like. I think the answer, Ed, is that most of her demographic are not old enough to understand what those words mean anyway, so they'll just repeat them regardless. You know? Fair point. Yeah. But it's like. But what we're dealing with, what we're dealing with is. The modern Lewis Carroll. But do you not understand the art of actually of making such nonsense that it makes sense? It is nonsense verse music. It is an artistic statement. Do you not understand? Okay, you, then. You? Okay, <laughs> in which case, <laughs> Richard, why is a raven like a writing desk? Ah, shit! I used to know the answer to that one. <laughs> what is it gone? Because it can produce a few notes, though very flat, and it is never put with the wrong end in front. <laughs> but like, I'm just waiting for a song that goes like, "Yeah, girl, my heart gyres and gimbles in the way for you." <laughs> that would actually make more sense. I mean, it's like um, there's a song that's actually called "Peanut Butter Jelly Time." Or something you like go get that. Get in the borough groves. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, your mum rats are gonna outgrave. Ah, uh, God. Uh, hi. But there's I'll, so many. Outgrave all night long. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, all of this actually makes more sense than songs that have actually been released. I just think it's a bottle dog going sexy. You could actually make. <laughs> I, I don't know, I, uh, just pulling out of my ass, my sword will go snicker snack into your knickers. I, I'm just, I'm just pulling something out of my ass here. It's, I'm not intending. You're putting something in your ass. Fuck's sake. Um, Slipper slap. But yeah. Slipper slapper. 
Yeah, you go over. <laughs> For God's sake! Uh, Can't think of a better time to use of our sound. Um, you have to pause Ed. Huh? You have to pause Ed entirely. But yeah, I'm just going. Blue screen of death. I'm going over the year end 100, and it's sort of like, okay, why isn't this higher in the list? And some of them, I'm sort of like, I've never even heard that song. This is yeah, that happens. With just the, problem, the continued rise of hipsterism, where people, like, I mean, I'd say hipsterism is a movement, but it is. But what I mean is, like, um, people, it feels to me like people, there's like a rejection, more so uh, in the last year than before, you know, where, of just listening to the main thing. Uh, dude. So everyone, what, what, yeah. Um, I'm talking about Alice, don't mind me. Yeah, the f- number five song is by Maroon 5. So hardly <laughs> hipster here. Um, yeah, yeah, but, uh, but what I mean is, the stuff in the top 100 is going to be more easily predictable because that leaves a small majority able to decide everything. Now, it's still a majority. It's still be decided by a majority, but like it'll be done by a small majority, which means the stuff is presumably going to wind up even more... Until eventually it becomes a minority. Yeah, I think we're talking about this yeah. last year, actually, aren't we? Yeah. I, pr- I think we probably were. But what I'm just saying is, the Billboard 100 is going to become ent- almost entirely irrelevant. Mm. I mean, it's it's exactly the same discussion we had last year. Yeah, yeah, oh. it is. I think it was probably me who brought it up then as well. But it's sort of the like news for me. I've disengaged quite a lot from the mainstream. Like the top number ones in this country, for example, I recognise about five of them, mm-hmm. and only because I'd seen them recently. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of the number ones that I'm seeing, I only know because of watching other review shows about music. So, sort of like, um, I wouldn't know Blank Space by Taylor Swift had it. Ever well, wanted. Taylor Swift is something that I just don't understand why they're so popular. I don't well, know. I, I mean, oh God, that fucking Shake It Off song. My, I mean, my current en- engagement with the mainstream is mostly through mashing it up with anime music. <laughs> <laughs> Just listening to Demi Lovato was cool for the summer, mashed up with the tune of Umar and Jan is something special. What? That's the best. I'm a Lincoln Park. I'm a Lincoln Park. That's the But still. But, that's the only way I keep on predicting with new music by listening to it mashed up into my horrible music sensibilities. There's something wrong with that, I know. Eh. Um, I'm trash! The thing is, it actually ends up sounding far better than the actual songs. It quite often does, yeah. yeah. But so some... I just went on to the uh, uh, year end charts and billboard. Ah, well, let's speak to you. Top artist Taylor Swift, top group One Direction, top artist female Taylor Swift, top artist male Ed Sheeran. Yeah. So, it's uh, and you just sort of like how I haven't heard any of their music anywhere. I mean, that's mainstream. It's Uptown Funk. Yeah. Uptown Funk. <laughs> that was Uptown Funk. Well, Uptown Funk has Uptown Funk is a bit of an anomaly because it's sort of like how has it endured over the course of last year and this year or okay, no, no. whatever. Not for young people and also our dads. Yeah. So even more vomit inducing is the fact that apparently according to Billboard, the uh, top rock artists of the year is Fallout Boy, which is literally cancer. <laughs> How? 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 How in Fallout Boy anything but a bunch of indie punk tards who need to be shoved up the arse with a rusty chainsaw? Coated in flames! A more important question is how are they still relevant after like what, 2010? I don't know. Yeah, also, yeah I don't. Indie, indie, indie punk art sounds, gives them far too much credit. It makes them sound like they're not the most manufactured thing in the world. Well, when I say indie punk art, I'm talking sort of how they present themselves. I'm not talking actual what they are. According oh, yeah. to the top rock album of the year, it's got into the Galaxy soundtrack. That's amazing. For real? How? That doesn't, that's got like two rock songs and the rest is sort of like 60s pop and stuff like that. It, is, it's a, it does separate rock from hard rock. It's hard rock album, it's a new ACDC album. Really? Hard rock. Yeah. Really? The new yeah, ACDC the album? The new ACDC album, okay, I'm, I've got to tackle this. 
Because I was interning with a music journalism outlet, I was basically given free reign to just look around, see what albums I could do reviews of, whatever. Ooh. I basically couldn't do a review of the new ACDC album because it was so repetitive of what they've already done. I, it literally sounded like an album that they would have released back in the 80s. I, that's why is not... There a, why is there a specific category for Christian music? I don't know. <laughs> That makes no sense because it's another genre. It's, it's, it used to it's be more, not so much anymore, but... What? There's actually something decent on here. So, in, it, it actually, actually mentions Lizzie Sterling, who's actually pretty good. But, well, Christian music can be basically any genre. You know, I'm kind of surprised there hasn't been a, an album called DJ Jesus Take the Turntable yet. Well, it's because of the DJ, my face must. One sec. I, I'm going to investigate. Google for it. Which would be the most mean thing in, in the world, though. What's the fact that the book would be called Isla Mal? <laughs> um, yeah, no. The top 100 charts of the year, soundtrack of the year, is about 50 go to stay. Oh, yay. Ugh. Which well, is. Yeah, so it's like, well, the thing is, you can say this about, I mean, we can, we can think about the state of music, but like, it can be said for like almost any form of art at the moment, like film. Mm -hmm. Everyone's been saying this about Hollywood for years. And also, not to mention, like, um, I don't know whether you guys saw, but Alan Moore was out talking shit about the publishing industry. Um, yeah, I remember saying that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, the fact that Nicki Minaj even gets a mention in this list makes me want to kill myself and everyone around me. What an absolute yeah, shit. Par. But as it goes, like, it's great. Web co even webcomics, you know, are at risk of being sort of propertized and, like. I think when it comes to all these billboards and everything. But I think, sorry, man, if I just sort of say something, I feel, I feel like uh, one, one last thing on the, on, the, on the relevance of Billboard stuff that I don't think I talked about last year was the fact that there's like rules about what the radio is allowed to play, like, sort of because they're liable to taking, uh, there's like that thing, isn't there, that prevents them from taking bribes from companies like, to pay them, pay songs for all this, like, that thing prevent that. You know, if it's such a rule like that has to exist, that's clearly a sign that there's just a straight up problem with all of these statistics and. Uh, you know, if you have to guard against preventing something from being played too much on the radio, you know, I don't know whether the same thing is true for like music TV channels and so on. But, it's like, hard to say with those. But just generally, I don't trust these aggregates at all. Just generally, mm. because like if yeah. you know if they're having to guard so hard against corrupt little broad end, then you know <laughs> that's a wrong to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. Was, if you only have one goal: make more money. Well, that's, I suppose that's true about reading, but still, but like, music, it seems especially uh, pervasive. It just seems to be everywhere. Well, or at least people talk about it like it's everywhere. I don't know how, that, how true it is, but just generally, I feel, if it, like, I don't really know how to put it. Like, I wouldn't trust a lot of, say, film reviews, but, like, you have to look specifically for the kind of, I think it's just a case of looking out for the smaller voices, isn't it? It's always going to be that. And not assuming yeah. that all outlets are right. Like it's, like, it's odd. Like, say, Metacritic might be on the money for a lot of stuff because it collects everyone's opinions. But still, a lot of those opinions that they're collecting are going to be from the, the big deal kind of people, aren't they? Mm. Um, and this is why I hope this is a realization that a lot more uh, people have had over the past couple of years. Because given events that don't really pertain to music at all, mm. that we won't go into here. <coughs> um, but right. I've come to realise that a lot of publications not in bed with the people producing the content but they are certainly kind of well it's basically the thing of a Kay and Lynch thing from years ago on GameSpot oh god like that. that I mean like not going into you know all the other various other events because there are too many to mention but you know that one is probably the most infamous one that everyone recognises yeah well, you can sort of draw a correlation between that and music um, getting to the top of Billboard and things like that, because you do notice strange trends which make you go, hang on, I haven't heard this on the radio, I haven't seen anything on music TV, how is it that these people end up on the top of lists which, in the long run, do not matter, and you start to spot like um, Katy Perry with Raw, I think she had some sort of agreement with Billboard 100 that meant she ended yeah. up on the list. Yeah, in any case, um, I'm, I'm probably, I'm sorry, I probably read this on some Illuminati shit, but you know, it's like... <laughs> oh, Illuminati? Yeah, I Illuminati, yeah, but uh, the whole, what I'm just saying is that it feels weird and dumb and I'm not entirely sure 
I buy everything that they say is, you know, supposedly the top hundred was it. Mm. But then it has official sales, so, so. Our, official sales, yeah, yeah. Depends on where it's tracked, I guess. Well, the thing is, it. I think the thing is, it's not. Why? Well, okay, it's indicative of sales. I'm talking about people who buy stuff legitimately. Like so much of the time now, people just steal stuff. Like if you were incorporated, all of the company got just straight up pirated. I think we'd see a very different picture. Well, I don't know. A lot of people would you pirate the mainstream stuff as well. That's the thing. Oh, I don't disagree. I'm just saying that it would cause things to go up and down. You know, <laughs> things would still be on the list. Some things would still definitely be on the list. But it, you might see a few things move in places to different positions, and there might be a few new entries or things pushed out. Like around the bottom, that would change things interestingly. Well, for that matter, the um, official list count things like uh, Bandcamp, for example. Bandcamp, mm. probably not, because Bandcamp is not <coughs> one so it's like I mean, it's going to count digital stuff like iTunes, but I don't think I don't think they ever touch Bandcamp. Well, it's got separate separate uh, sections of downloads. I'm presuming that would be things like Spotify and iTunes and stuff like that. Well, uh, Bandcamp yeah. is. Bandcamp it even covers is, streaming services. If it doesn't, that's going to change things a lot. Well, Bandcamp is an interesting one because how it works, that's kind of become a bit of the modern day indie producing source. You know, Absolutely. that's where actual independently produced bands go to so that they can get their music out there and get people hearing it. Mm. Um, but it's a very interesting landscape when you consider so many things like Bandcamp, Spotify, even YouTube and all the channels where people will they'll produce music and make it available for sale and um, also Patreon, mm. how that's been working with music That's a good point, recently. I feel like things, especially with indie music, it's going to make things incredibly hard to track because mm. um, this whole patron system is going to change the scope of a lot of um, how art is produced yeah. and um, how we track it. I mean, like, you get, because a lot of the time people aren't paying very individual items so much as just for someone to carry on and they just get a slice of the pie whenever anything gets made. Mm. Come to think of that, I suppose that's in line with things like with the, with the rise of stuff like Netflix and Amazon Prime Video, isn't it? It's like where, where it's done basically as a, like some kind of form of subscription. Mm. Uh, we're, we're, we're entering a more subscription based sort of service and I suppose the same could be said of stuff like Spotify that's where it's happening to music because you know in that case you aren't paying for a specific album most of the time unless you actually actively choose to do so mm. and then it's like uh, you're just streaming whatever you're saving up for at the time and paying a monthly subscription well, it's or not in simple terms then music as a service rather than a product yeah mm. yeah or rather a product where you just um, the, the whole idea of on demand yeah first, but or, or um subscribing to just get everything in bulk you know mm. like because i mean like patreon stuff you get it permanently don't you yeah but it's like but you get the stuff over the duration that you're subscribed for um yeah but, but that's definitely the model we seem to be going for it's very much it's, it's just the kind of model at the moment i think that might be my biggest argument for why so like a lot of hundred are kind of becoming less relevant because we're moving to a different form of distribution mm. it just doesn't it isn't the same one of the mainly bugs in Spotify is the fact that it's got the same kind of ideas seen at Netflix and it's entirely region locked still. How do you mean? That is true. Uh, it's easy to only get in certain countries. Uh, it's all the way in other countries and it's just a mess. So uh, basically you've got to sign up with a foreign account or whatever or proxy your way through to something else if you want to listen to another country Spotify or something. Oh Jesus. Yes, yeah, pretty much. It's the same problem as Netflix, same problem as PSN and all manner of stuff like that. To be fair, Netflix is less of a big deal simply because they actually go and put out their content. They, they, you know, they are trying to broaden the extent to which their the content is available between all the multiple countries. They get, I suppose, because partially, you know, they're looking to commission things from different countries and release them everywhere. Yeah. I think it's a matter of co it's a matter of content ownership. But the more co the more of the content is, that actually gets produced by Netflix, the more the doors will actually open up. Yeah. Like the fact that they're making the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon sequel or they're looking to produce anime or whatever, you know, that way it'd be stuff from other countries that would, in any other situation, be region locked, actually um, getting brought across from all countries because they actually have the, they actually own it and don't need to pay for that. Mm. I suppose that would be, hopefully, wouldn't it be nice if Spotify could do that as well, like if they could actually just straight up give people deals to make music and, well, I say that'd be nice, but I can imagine that there could be all sorts of ways that would go wrong There would as be. Well. That would be quagmired with so much. It would probably be, uh, yeah, it would be harder with music than it would be with film, probably. I find with your exclusive Spotify only albums. Please, God, no. 
Oh god, that would. Yeah, no, that's okay. That that that's a horrible dystopia. Even happen. I can take it better with Netflix than I can with anything else. Um, but I don't know. Like Netflix, presumably they'll have sort of Blu-ray releases and things for some of their stuff. Oh, I mean, that, that's the only that's been out on Blu-ray. So. Well, true. And now, well, that was only partially funded by them. I think we, I think it's we haven't yet seen Blu-rays for anything exclusively produced by them. Also, the fact that, you know, things like they've been limited to certain services, like Fear the Walking Dead, have actually been released as well. So. Yeah, but like, uh, what about, um, say, Medical Soul? Is that out on Blu-ray yet? Yes, it is. It is? Okay, well, then we're fine then. What about things like Daredevil, Jessica Jones? I haven't seen either of those yet. I was just going to drop me out anyway. But... Give it time. Well, well, Daredevil, give it time. I'm sure it'll happen. <clears throat> Considering how popular that one has become, it it would kind of be... Strange if it wasn't. Well, so, man, the high cost of the American rule. It's going to have to be coming out. Absolutely. But what I, what I mean is, I, th- I can see there would be an option where it could happen with Spotify and so on, but the problem would be that it would all be almost like paper digital releases like iTunes. Yeah. That, they already have that function to buy stuff digitally, but you would never see physical releases of those albums like that, probably. Yeah, and the key problem in the case of... I mean, there's legal problems with uh, producing and <laughs> publications and everything What's like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. With, with music as it is when you're dealing with a service like Spotify that would become so much of a problem not to mention that, that the purpose of this is that like it would be completely redundant because the only people who would really help would be the little guys and that's already facilitated by Bandcamp yeah what the only thing that Spotify would be able to provide would be a wider reach of notice. But mm. like, that reminds me of this thing iTunes had. I don't know if they still have it, but they got like the album, of the, the single of the week or whatever, where they just give away. I don't think they do anymore. I think I saw that. Um, they probably stopped I mean, it because I mean, they probably don't used to get that. They about it getting away. Yeah. I don't know. I, I've seen something along those lines. It, despite not having iTunes or anything like that, I have seen that sort of thing. We just restructured it and listed something slightly different to the, what it was originally. Possibly. The thing, is, the, the, the thing really is, the only thing Spotify would really be able to reward people with would be exposure. And, you know, oh, but, God, as, exposure. As any artist knows, as any film of artist knows, being paid an exposure just isn't the same as being paid in Hong Kong cash. Well, essentially, <laughs> the being paid in exposure, it, you exposure. can just... I mean, like, they'd have to give you money and exposure, but it would not justify it so much of the time. Yeah, you can just imagine them just turning around and showing their asses and saying, have this exposure. Well, depending on whose ass it is, maybe they pay for that. <laughs> 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 Well played. <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah, that, 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 that went down a bit of a dumb route because I said something dumb and then immediately re- realised the mistake and then we pointed out the mistakes and it, like, over and over. But, no, yeah. it, it, there is a logic to it. It's just, it would have to be very thoroughly policed for yeah. the artists not to get royally screwed over. That is true. And it's really, I don't think these things are happening already. I think there are problems already like that.